Hey guys, it's Gary Dean, DetailJuice.com. I have been in and out of town for the past couple of weeks. We did a segment for Motorhead Garage, which will be airing on May 15th, 2022 at 8.30 a.m. on Motor Trend Channel. Uh, that is Sunday, May 15th at 8.30 a.m. I will have a segment on Motorhead Garage on the Motor Trend Channel. Uh, so... I did that and then I came home, we got back to work for a couple days and then I had to go to Stamford, Connecticut and parts of New York to deal with some boats and I had an interview with Power and Motor Yacht Magazine. Now I'm back to deal with this pretty cool special little thing. This is a 1957 completely re restored BMW Isetta. Super cool little thing. Uh, this is a one-cylinder, I believe, BMW motorcycle engine. Um, the European models had three wheels. This one has two wheels. Um, I will be taking this rear rack off. We'll be polishing that separately, but mainly I'll be removing it so that I can polish um, the rear here. You can see that it's got some orange peel in it. I'm gonna try to do what I can to get rid of some of the orange peel, especially in these bigger sections. Um, there is definitely some overspray down here on the rocker panel. I don't know if you can see it. All in this area right here. So there's a bunch of overspray on it. Oh, I found what I was looking for, Tony. There's a couple of bubbles right here, which is um, either, I mean, they definitely could be dust nibs in the paint. Um, the paint looks a little thin. I'm actually going to take some readings and see what's going on around this thing. Uh, as you guys may or may not know, uh, a coating thickness gauge is only going to really tell you total thickness of all of the substrate. This thing's pretty dirty. Um, so I got to address this overspray. I got to do a little bit of figuring on these. I don't know if it's rust underneath. I don't think so because the, the body's in great shape. These could just be dust nibs. Um, I think I can show you right here is one. And then, yeah, so one there and there's one there. So we'll see. And there is also one right there. That looks like a dust nib to me. So I'm going to, well, there's one there, one there. I'm seeing more of them now. Uh, I had my client out here. I couldn't show them. I couldn't find them. Uh, but there's a ton of overspray right here. You can see all that. So got to address all that overspray. Got to remove whatever orange peel I can find. We do have some issues uh, with overspray right in here, which I'll be addressing. Um, the wheels look pretty pristine already. Um, this is not original. The owner asked me to see if I can get that off and it's actually on the inside. I don't know whether I can or not. I am going to do some Google searching and try to figure it out. Um, on the interior, check this out. That thing, whatever that shock is, makes this door literally feel weightless. It's pretty awesome. Um, so before we go on the inside, I'm just going to continue walking around it. We've got to uh, address the interior windows. Uh, they asked. It does have a pretty nasty body work spot. You can see where they work the metal here. What's odd to me is this literally doesn't look like there's anything worked there. Like it looks awesome. And then you're right here. Right on top of this, where this looks awesome, where it's obvious they would have had to do something to this section if they were working on this section. This looks great, that looks bad. I don't, I don't quite understand it. It also looks like there's some cracking inside this area of maybe the Bondo or whatever, but you can see it was worked all the way down. It kind of, it's all wavy down there, but you can see in this area, it looks really bad. Um, if you go under the car, like so, you can hear all the the uh, Bondo in it versus this is metal. Okay, here we go.
very different sounds. So anyway, you, I can see up here where they worked it, but it just uh, looks bad on the outside. See how amazing the undercarriage looks in this thing? Everything's brand new. Looks awesome. Fuel tank up there. All right, so I got to try to address this, see what I can do. Probably not a lot. It's got a big scratch right there. Try to get that out. Um, they did cut and buff this because there's some orange peel around here and the bigger spots look fine. So I'm going to avoid cutting really deep. There's some overspray in here as well as a really rough texture. This is odd. I would figure that the windows would open this way to pull in air, but they don't. It's weird. Um, so anyway, I got a, a address in there. These headlights look to be a different color red. I'm sure it's the same. It, they were probably painted separately with a different batch. Um, these lights are the same. Uh, on the interior, I'm going to hand polish all of the painted surfaces. We're going to clean the interior windows. I want to try to get some of this nastiness off of the original sun visors in here. It's got just some weirdness on there. Um, but yeah, that's it. So, definitely have some direction, and I'm going to get started. Uh, we're going to pull this off, like I mentioned. This is the cover. It looks pretty good. Overall, the paint's, it's good paint. They did a good job. They even did a decent job finishing it out. They just, man, they left some overspray, and then that really bad spot. So, all right, well, I'm generally the bearer of bad news, and when I told them not a whole lot I could do with that, they weren't necessarily happy, but not necessarily unhappy at me, unhappy with just the work that was done. They may or may not get that fixed. So I'm going to do my best to correct the paint as best I can. I'm going to polish all the jewelry. We're going to do a basic stuff on the interior. It already looks pretty good. We're just trying to get it to the next level. This thing has actually been invited to several Concours events, uh, including Hilton Head, which is what... I'm detailing it for, uh, and they'll be trailering it around and that kind of thing. You can see this weird, I don't know if you can see it, it's like a ripple in the paint. It's odds oh, right there. And then you can see where there's more body work in here done. So I'm going to see what I can do. The only problem is that's a small area, but we'll go from there. All right. I'm going to go ahead and get my equipment out and get started. I'll bring you back for uh, more of the ride. Okay, so I have my coating thickness gauge here, and I haven't run any, um, I haven't run any tests yet, but let's just check it out. That's where we're at. Let's see. That's not what we want. We want mills, okay. 59.1 It's the constant and you can move it around, but single reading. Okay, 40.4 right here, 34.4 there, 43, 61. There's a big scratch right there. I don't know if you can see that. I gotta get that out of there. 42, 52. 34, it's all over the place. 36, let's try over here. 62, 49. It's not giving me a reading. 22. Won't give me a reading. That's weird. 51 there. 
58, 29. Wow. Incredibly inconsistent across the board. 56 there, 31 there. And that's just total thickness of everything on top of that metal. I won't even give me a reading. It's weird. 60. Won't read right there. 58. I don't know what's under there, but. 50. Forty-five, twenty-nine, fifty-eight. It's weird. It won't read in some spots. Yeah. Let's see where we're at there. Eleven. So we got lots of material, which I'm I'm pretty sure all that material is Bondo. Twelve. 11. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure we're reading a bunch of Bondo. 22. 23. 30. Now let's go right over where the issue is. Yeah, it doesn't want to read there. I'm guessing it's because it's so much Bondo. Yeah, 49.9 and then... It doesn't want to read all that Bondo. It can't read underneath it. 48. Anyway, just trying to, these things are only good for just tell, telling you total thickness. 32, 34, 32, 43, 23, same spot over here, 22, pretty consistent there. 20, 23, 26, 56, 38, 24. So I would imagine with the crazy build is where there's Bondo, 27, 22, 26, let's see down here, 24, 23, one, oh, 17, sorry. Got excited. 21. Pretty consistent under there. Let's see what we got here. Man, I know that the crazy inconsistencies have to be Bondo underneath there. So it's pretty pretty inconsistent with the readings where the Bondo's at, but semi-consistent everywhere else as far as uh, just how they've laid the paint and whatever. So took those few readings. Again, those readings don't mean anything really um, because I this thing won't tell me how much clear coats there it only tells me everything from the top where i press this thing to the metal or to the bondo if it can read off the bondo if it's not real bad oh there's a nasty spot where they didn't polish right there all right well i took some readings again these just give you a general idea of what's going on you can get one of these for like 60 bucks on amazon uh, it's good to have. I don't use it all the time, but on something like this where I'm potentially going to sand in some spots, I just want to make sure that uh, I'm not going to burn through. And uh, this gives you just a general idea. Uh, it is not the end all be all. So still be very careful if you're going to cut anything. All right. Well, I'm going to get to work. All right. So <clears throat> I'm doing a little wet sanding uh, with some 2000 grit and uh, in this area where I mentioned before, where all that body work was showing through, I just gave it a little sand until I just felt like I had to stop. 
I believe I can successfully get all these scratches out with no problem. All that's left from that issue, the, the crazy ripple that was in there, is just that little dot. I don't know if you can see it. That dot and then that dot right there. And then there's a little bit right there. You can see the gloss on the dots. That's super deep. See that dot there. And then there's that one there. And then this little piece here. Super deep, but overall, I got the ripple gone. So those aren't even going to be a big deal once I get it polished out. And then I got some orange peel out of this area. I'm going to... They didn't cut and buff. It doesn't look like they did a ton of work on the rear area. I did just a couple passes with the sandpaper. You can see all the uh, little dimples in it. All of these patchy areas, the low spots, that's, you know, that's orange peel. So I'm going to sand a lot of that out of the rear area. You can see how peely it is back here. We'll get a lot of that out. Um, I'm going to try 2000 grit, make sure I'm comfortable with it and move from there. We're just going to get the big areas. We're not going to get tight up against anything. It's just silly to do that. You're going to hit uh, with your polisher. You're going to hit all the jewelry is what I call it. And you don't want to do that. So what we want to do is stay on the big areas and try to get the majority out. Your eyes see the big areas, not the small areas. But you can see the weirdness in the paint up here. See how inconsistent it is. I'm going to try to sand some of that out. So anyway, that's where I'm at right now is trying to work on that. I'm very happy with how that came out. Several other spots on the car, um, but that literally needed to be reworked. And if I fix that, I saved this guy a ton of money, at least $1,000. So I'm going to go ahead around and get some of this orange peel out, and I'll bring you back when there's more to, sh more to show you. All right, so you can see... I got all the peel out of that. It's just a little bit left. And again, diminishing returns. It was mostly gone, but I saw some stuff in the paint that I wanted to get out, and so I did it. Um, there was some nastiness right here that I mentioned in the last clip. I got all that out, and then I found another dust nib. Um, oh, the dust nib was right in there. It was right there. Anyway, I got it out. So you can see... Got some sandy, sandy patches. Got to compound them out now, but that's it. So those are the sections uh, that you know are worth doing. I'm not going to bother sanding any of this door. It just it's flat enough. Now, is there some peel in it? Very little, and sometimes you just got to leave it. I don't believe that I can be productive at that. Um. This was the area I told you with some dust nibs, or not dust nibs, but pigtails in this section. But I'm going to try to, you can see how flat that is. Pretty flat. I mean, it's a little wavy, but not, not real bad. Not worth sanding it to try to get more out, that's for sure. It's dangerous. All right, well, I'm actually just going to start polishing on that section right there. Um, I am using a brand new tool today that I just got. Um... This is the Flex PXE 80 12.0 EC. Pretty cool looking little three inch uh, DA or rotary. It's got different uh, attachments. Uh, it came with two batteries. I bought two additional ones. The charger is pretty awesome for this tool. Um, I got my Milwaukee charger over here, but look at this. It tells you how much time is left uh, before it's charged. Pretty cool. And it's yellow uh, when it's charging. When it gets over three, uh, three bars, three or four, so 75% done, it turns green like that. So it tells me there's 20 more minutes till that one's charged. So, All right, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and fire this thing up and try to get some of that out so we can see how that looks. So I'll bring it right back. Okay, so we are, well, I am done sanding. I used a combo of 2,000 and 2,500 grit. You can see that this is pretty much good. Now, when you're sanding, and, and I didn't use a sanding block, I didn't use anything but the sandpaper. Um, you can see it in there. So these are both, one's 2,000, one's 2,500. And so, 
you can see at the ends over here, you can see where some of the old sanding marks are where they didn't get them out. And then you can see where some of the orange peel is still left there. What you want to do is really get the big areas. Those smaller areas are gonna get you into trouble. So when you're sanding, you wanna give yourself a nice buffer room where your polisher can come outside that sanding line and still be effective. So I wanna be able to get the outside of this taken care of, even though it's not sanded, I wanna be able to polish all the way up to this, but I don't wanna to have to remove sanding scratches that close. So that's kind of, the orientation in which you would sand a bigger area. Um, and a lot of times you don't notice the edges unless you're really looking at it. So I got a lot, 97% of the orange peel out of this big back section. There's a ton in here. Um, I would imagine this comes off and you could ac access it. This, when you take this off in this bracket, there's actually a bolt that comes through the inside to the outside that this is bolted to. Um, there's also a piece of rubber back here with a sticky back on it. So I don't want to have to mess with all that, but you can see all the orange peel that's still in this right here. It's just too small a section, and I'm not sure how we get that um, bolt out. I gotta ask the owner, maybe there's something we could do, and I can sand more of this, but this bothers me a little bit because it looks like absolute garbage. Not happy with all that peel. Um, this lower section isn't that bad, so I'm not real worried about the lower section. You can see there's peel in it for sure. Uh, but I don't think people are gonna be looking this low. But beyond that, the rack's going back on there. I got that thing off, and so it kind of takes your eye off of focusing on this down here. I just really wish I could get this section a little bit better. Um, but again, the license plate covers up to here, so you really only see that, but that's what looks bad to me. So anyway, I got a lot of the peel out of there. This had some Bondo work done that was not flat. It is definitely flat now with exception of this dip right here. Can't do anything about that, but I think I smoothed this area up enough where when I polish it, it will just go away and look a lot better. Hopefully they won't have to get any body work done, in which case I will have saved them lots of money. Um, when I look at this in the light, there's a lot of pigtails in here, but they look really light from where they uh, didn't remove them when they sanded. But you can see, I went ahead and got some more of the orange peel off of this section uh, and then worked that section a bit. And then I should be sanding this, but I'm gonna try polishing it out before I sand. You always, the best rule of thumb when you're doing any polishing or sanding or any of that is use the least aggressive method first. So just try something light. Even if you know it's not gonna work, work your, your way up to more aggressive uh, because you might be surprised. Um, down here, there was a bunch of overspray and I tried to clay bar it. It didn't really want to come off. So I just sanded it off with 2,500 grit. So I sanded all of this. Um, there were a ton of dust nibs in this thing. You can see one right there. Um, I'm not going to sand, sand, sand and potentially go through. Um, as you saw at the beginning, the readings are all over the place. I don't know what's going on. Um, and so you always want to err on the side of caution. This car already looks better than it did when it was brand new, I'm positive, and uh, even though they're going to Concours events with this thing, um, there's a level in which you get diminish or, yeah, diminishing returns. So you can work more and do more, but it really doesn't benefit you at all. If you look at this side, you can see a little peel in here. I may sand this section, I don't know, it's a big, large section. Doesn't look that bad. Um, but I may go ahead and do just a section in here. Um, I don't like to get this close to a body line, but this had a net, like a deep scratch in it all the way down here. I got most of that scratch out. You can see right here where that scratch was. It goes all the way down here. It's a very long scratch. I'm not going to work it too hard. It's on a body line or right near a body line. It's already going to be difficult enough for the polisher to get down here at the line and correct. So I'm not going to do any more to that. I minimized it, but you can still see it. Um, dust nibs. There were several. I had some here, which I got out. And then here, here, and then I showed you that one. This was just a really nasty, inconsistent spot. You can see this looks all right. There's still some, like, 
nibs, dust nibs. I'm gonna sand that spot for sure. But yeah, so I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and sand this spot, this big section, and then I'm gonna get that nastiness out of there. I don't like that at all. That looks funny. Looks weird. All right, so I'm gonna sand that out. I'm gonna go ahead and do this section right here, and uh, I guess I'll bring you back after that. All right, so I just had my client out here and we were just looking over some sections together. Uh, so the last clip I showed you that I had sanded this section and that section, I've compounded this side back out. I got every scratch out of that, it looks awesome. I have not done the finishing polish, all I've done is compounded. Uh, and I, the two tools that I'm using today are this flex right here that I showed you earlier. This thing is awesome, I love it. PXE 8012.0 EC. This thing's awesome. Uh, I was using that, but then I switched to my Milwaukee. Uh, these small areas on this car, this is perfect for moving those uh, sanding scratches. And then I'll be able to go back with the dual action portion of that and uh, do the finishing polish. So what I'm using is the 2023. So this is a product for next year. It's the, uh, my signature series, uh, professional special reserve adapt smart polish. This, uh, think impeccable polish that we released this year, but more cut, same finish. That stuff's awesome. I am also using some smart cut. So that is the maximum cut in my lineup. That will be a step lower than this, but this is much higher in finishing ability than this is even though that finish is pretty good. So anyway, I've compounded this whole section. That looks a lot better than it did, even if you, even though you can still see kind of a little bit, it doesn't look nearly as bad. So I got all of that sanded and then uh, compounded back out as well as this side. Uh, so now I did end up um, going ahead and going back underneath there and removing this. I'm gonna go ahead and sand this section right here because it just looks horrible. Uh, but we also found a few issues on the front here. I don't know if you can see all this weirdness. It's like a line. Let's see. And it's, it's everywhere, it's like a rash. It's weird. It's got different areas where it's at. So I'm gonna sand all that out and then we took the windshield wiper off because, I don't know if you can see, but it's way crazy inconsistent around this, th oh, there we go. Some of, yeah, there we go, there's the lighting. See how weird that looks? Right in there. It goes all the way around, see all that crap? All right, I'm not gonna butt right up against it, but I'm gonna try to get a little bit of that out. All right, guys, 1957 BMW Isetta. Um, you remember where I sanded both sides and back there. I've reassembled the rear. I put the rack back on and the license plate, uh, frame and the plate, but stupid glossy. Got all that orange peel out. If you notice, you don't notice the edges where I didn't sand. You just notice the big, big space that has no orange peel, which is pretty awesome. Now, I feel like the best part of this detail was what I was able to do to this section right here. And uh, as I showed you earlier uh, in the beginning clip, it was really rough. I mean, really rough where they had worked the body right here. And now, you definitely can tell there's been some work done, but it doesn't look out of place and really oddball like it like it did. So I, I spent a lot of time sanding and making sure that I got a lot of what was there out. Again, there's a little crease here, there's a crease there, and uh, it's not perfect, but perfection is not reality even when you are concours detailing. Um, got a little, little stuff here and there. Let's see if you can see that. It's not a dust nib, it's just something in the paint. So uh, yeah, so that, that spot looks awesome. I sanded here and got a lot of the orange peel out. 
Um, I sanded this whole section pretty flat. I did not have to sand this big lower section. I sanded pretty much the whole front here, especially right in this area. Looks awesome. This section got a lot of sanding. I sanded around the uh, windshield wiper, which we just uh, reinstalled. Sanded all around here. It had some nasty defects in it, but it looks awesome now. You can see still, it's not peel. It's all over this, um, the front door here. I think it was bad prep, honestly. It's not in the clear coat. I tried to sand it, it didn't really want to come out, but it had a lot of those areas here too, which you can see is all nice and flat now. I sanded, 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 sanded on that. Looks awesome, very happy with how it turned out. Uh, we hand polished all the chrome with Smart Finish. Um, I used the combination of Adapt Smart Polish uh, and Smart Cut. To cut I sanded all of the top here I mean that really looks awesome there was a dust nib right there I don't know if you can see it but it's smooth now and I sanded all back there I probably sanded 90% of this car um, I sanded lots of spots dust nibs uh, underneath there was all kinds of overspray can't see any of that now it's all gone all the dust nibs were compounded out. Really looks nice. Polish the lights. Um, we did get into the interior a bit. Uh, polished all the stuff in the inside. We polished this top rail, the top of the uh, front door. sanded all of this clean the wheels really really well we used the IPC infinite purpose cleaner for the wheels uh, what else uh, hand polished the chrome rack uh, I use we also polished this compounded and polished this uh, engine cover which does go back over here on the other side it goes over the, uh, well, the engine. Uh, I basically just wiped all this down. I used Infinite Use Detail Juice, just sprayed it in there, wiped everything down, just made it look nice and presentable. And then uh, that's it. And this thing is, is looking right. So that's it, 1957 BM BMW Isetta 300. Yes, the Steve Urkel car. Super cute little thing. So on the interior, uh, we hand polished all of the paint inside here. Both the wheel, wheel wells um, hand polished all around the edge. Got a wasp in there. We're gonna let him die. But that's it. Uh, hand polished the uh, steering wheel and that gauge. It's not necessarily a cluster, it's just where the gauge is. Um, so that's it there, guys. 1957 BMW Isetta 300. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching these videos. I appreciate you taking the time to listen to me babble. If you got questions for me, if you'd like to talk about my detailing products at detailjuice.com, if you'd like to schedule a detail, you want to talk about a project that you're working on, if I can help you in any way, my cell phone number is 813-846-4406. My Instagram is gary.dean.35. I'll put it right here. And... Uh, this thing turned out awesome. I'm pretty happy with it. Check out Gary Dean's Detail Juice Nation. It's a group on Facebook where we talk about only my products, my processes, and what I've got going on. And uh, this has been a 1957 BMW Isetta. Thank you guys for watching.
pretty cool little car to detail and get right and I uh, hope they win lots of trophies. All right, thanks for watching guys, have a great day.